Baptist preacher walks into his congregation one morning, gets up on the pulpit, and he slams the pulpit, and he says, Family of God, God Himself has sent me a message for you today. You heard this one? <laughs> he goes on to say, and that message is, this church needs to learn how to crawl. And the congregation said, teach us how to crawl. Teach us how to crawl, Lord. He said, after we learn how to crawl, we're going to stand up on our feet. We're going to learn how to walk. Help us walk, Lord. Help us walk. And after we learn how to walk, we're going to run. Help us run, Lord. Help us run. And after we learn how to run, we're going to learn how to tie. Help us crawl, Lord. Help us crawl. <laughs> All right, so this morning, y'all know that y'all know that I've been flooded. I mean, absolutely flooded with scripture the last couple of days, last couple of sermons. He gave me a break this week, apparently, because I've only got one for you. Are you at the end of your rope? Anybody ever been there? Been at the end of the rope? Yeah, yeah. I'm just talk about talk amongst yourself for a second. I got, I got to get over here. Get this here thing out. We got a rope. Uh-oh. It's all tangled up and knotted up. But that's how your life is, though, right? Amen. Your life's all knotted up, tangled up. We don't know what we're going to do with our lives. We get to the end of the rope, we don't know what to do. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? I don't understand. What am I supposed to do? This, this rope, man, I don't, I don't understand the whole rope thing. Who's at the end of your rope? Does anybody know who's at the end of their rope? You can't see the end of my rope. It goes on forever. That rope goes on for a long, you can't even see the end of it. Right? You think about this rope for a second, this is, this is your lifeline. This is your lifeline that, that Jesus Christ gave you. Is it going to have knots in it? Sure it's going to have knots in it. See, look, look at all the knots. See how they're spaced out there? Look how they're closer right here. Your life, whether you want to admit it or not, basically it's a lot like a rope. All different kinds of rope out there, right? This this rope here is pretty tight weave, tight, tight. You got some big rope, you got thick rope, you got nylon rope, you got cotton rope, you got all kinds of rope. Everybody in here has a certain kind of rope. We're not all the same. We don't have the same life. God doesn't have the same plan for each and every one of us. But you can guarantee through God's Word that there's going to be knots in your rope. There's going to be trials and tribulations in your rope. Some of those knots you can get to fairly easily and you can unravel them. And life's good. Then all of a sudden you come to another knot. That knot might not be so easy to get out. You might have to wrestle with that knot for a while. Eventually, you may have to use that knot for a rope, for a handhold to get to the next rope, to get to the next knot. But you can guarantee our lives are full of knots. But do you know, do you know, do you know, who's at the end of your rope? Who's holding your rope? Jesus Christ is holding my rope. He gave me this rope. He said, follow me, son. And this is my guide. This is my rope. He didn't promise me it was going to be a smooth rope. He didn't say it was going to be a rope without any knots in it. He said there's going to be trials. There's going to be tribulations. I want you to think about something for just a second. You see that little white end right there? About that long? You can't see the end of my rope. But this little white part right here represents my time here on earth. Not a very long time. It's a short time. But I have all of this to look forward to. I have all of that rope to look forward to. That's my eternity out there at the end of that rope. Jesus Christ promised me that. Jesus Christ saved me so that I could get to the end of my rope and see the Father Himself face to face. And then I've still got rope. Okay? For days and days and days I've got rope. So it doesn't matter how many knots you come across in your rope. It doesn't matter whether you can get 
the knots untangled or whether you have to use them as a stronghold. God's plan for you is that there's going to be trial and tribulation. You're going to learn from it or you're going to handle it. If you handle it, you got to not lose. If you have to learn from it, that means you grab onto it and keep going and you put it behind you. But you learn something. <laughs> Jesus Christ never said it was going to be easy. It wasn't easy for him, and it's not going to be easy for us. But this little line right here, this little white mark, is all you have on earth. So why are we worried about material things? Why are we worried about all the things that are going? Why are we worried about all these knots? Why are we worried about it? This is all the time we have with each other, folks. But you have eternity laid out for you. It's in front of you. You've got to hang on to your rope. You can't let go. Because we know that Jesus is at the end holding on to each and every rope. I don't know, there's a hundred some people in here. If everybody brought a piece of rope up here and we tied it right underneath that cross right there, that's what it looks like. All across America, the world, millions of ropes tied at the bottom of that cross and Jesus Christ is watching over each and every one of them. Amen. But we got to get to Him. we got to get to Him. The thing I want to talk to you today about is the rope. If we read, if we read uh, Acts chapter 9... Right quick. Uh, page, what did I say it was? 838. Go with me there for just a second. We're probably going to come back to it. Chapter 9, verse 22. Saul's preaching became more and more powerful. Let, let me just stop right here. This, this takes place in a time, and it, it, it says Saul, okay? But in, in chapter 13, you're going to understand that Saul is actually Paul, because that's what he went by, all right? Paul was what? He was one of the greatest apostles ever. This man preached and preached and preached. He went to Rome. He went to Egypt. This man did more for, for the ministry than I don't know what, anybody, okay? He was huge. One of, the, one of the best apostles ever. Now Saul, in the beginning of this book, if you read this from the start, Saul was out to persecute Jesus. He was wanting to, to go and collect believers and put them in chains and drag them through the streets. But somewhere along the road, Jesus came to him, asked him, why are you trying to persecute me, Saul? And he converted him right there. And Saul became a man of the gospel. He began ministering and preaching. And his preachings got to be so much that people couldn't handle it. They didn't know how this man who was a murderer two days ago was all of a sudden praising Jesus' name. So here it says, Saul stayed with the believers. Wait, was that the right one? Yes. No. Saul's preaching became more and more powerful. And the Jews in Damascus couldn't refute his proofs that Jesus was indeed the Messiah. After a while, some of the Jews plotted together to kill him. They were watching for him day and night at the city gate so they could murder him. But Saul was told about their plot. So during the night, some of the other believers lowered him in a large basket through an opening in the city wall. They opened, they, they, a group of men took Saul, tied a bunch of rope to a basket, lowered him down through a wall, through a hole in the wall, so that he could escape being murdered. All, everybody else was at the city gate just waiting for him, looking for him. They were hunting him. But these men selflessly lowered him to safety so that he could continue preaching the gospel, so he could continue his ministry. So I ask you again, do you know who's at the end of your rope? Jesus Christ is at the end of your rope. But there are people in your lives that are holding your rope. There are people in this church that are holding my rope. And they can lower me down to safety selflessly, not thinking of themselves, not concerned about the danger involved, not concerned about their own persecution for doing what they did. This, this, scripture, this scripture does not tell us anything about these men. We don't know their profession. We don't know how old they were. We don't know where they came from. All we know is, is that they, out of love for Paul, and love for Jesus Christ saved this man so that he could go on. They had no idea at the time. They didn't question Paul. Okay? They didn't say, hey, 
what are you going to do if we save you? They didn't question him. God had put it on their heart that this needed to be done, and that's what got done. They didn't care what happened to Paul. They knew that God had a plan for Paul. It was up to them. It was their job in the moment to save him. It was their job in the moment to put danger aside, knowing that if they got caught, they would be killed. It was, it was, it was pure love. It was God's will. It was the Holy Spirit. It was Jesus Christ Himself who told these men, you need to save this man so he can continue to do my work. And that's what they did. They didn't care. They had no idea. They had no idea that Paul would go on to spread the gospel in Rome and in Egypt. They had no idea. They didn't ask. They didn't care. They did what they felt God was telling them to do. And they accepted Paul's rope. And they held on to his rope. It doesn't say in here that he got halfway down and they just let him go. Okay? It doesn't say that, that they got part of the way and they started swinging the rope to see if he would get sick. All right? They, all it says is they lowered him down to safety. So we know who's at the end of our rope. It's Jesus Christ. Amen. Who's helping you hang on to this little white part? Do you have people in your life that are holding your rope? Do you have people in your life that that you can count on, you can trust with every ounce of your body to do the right thing for you? Do you have people in your life that when you're at the end of your rope, you can call on them and they can help you out? You know, God forbid that someone ever get to the end of their rope, the end of this little white piece right here, and think they have no one. Church, we, we touch a lot of people. We, we teach people about Jesus and we teach God's Word and we teach God's law and, and we love on each other and we feed each other and we do all these things. If someone was to come to this church and walk out of here and not feeling like they had at least one person holding on to their rope when they left, we failed. We know, I know, that Jesus Christ has a hand on everybody's rope. But we all, we all have to have people holding our rope. We are interconnected. We are intertwined in more ways than anyone can ever imagine. There are people here today that I met long, 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 long time ago. We went our separate ways and now we're back together. I guarantee you, I guarantee you they never let go of my rope. And I never let go of theirs. One phone call, one text message. One stopping by the house unexpected. I need help. I'm right there. They're right there. This church, we're trying to get out into our community and we're trying to, we're trying to spread the gospel and, 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 and keep up the ministry. And I'm going to tell you what, folks, if we don't have people in here that are stepping up and willing to touch the rope, hold the rope, we're not going to succeed. It does not matter. Not one iota whether anybody knows your name. It doesn't matter how much money is in your bank account. It doesn't matter whether you're short, fat, skinny, tall, pretty, ugly. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what skills you have. It doesn't matter whether you have a boat. It doesn't matter whether you have a, a, a freight liner with a giant horse trailer behind it. It doesn't matter what kind of car you drive. It doesn't matter what kind of clothes you wear, what kind of shoes you have how many pairs of shoes you have, how many thousands of pairs of shoes you have, that just goes out to the women, I'm just saying. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We have to be willing to hold the rope for each other. We have to be willing to help someone take this knot out of their rope. And if we can't help them, and we turn them over to Jesus and He can't help them, then we've got to let them know that that's a stronghold for them. That's something for them to hang on to and learn from. I think, I think what we're trying to accomplish here today is we need to know that I don't care. Jesus doesn't care. Philip doesn't care. Dan doesn't care. Alan doesn't care. Miss Becky doesn't care. Miss Jean doesn't care. Nobody cares where you came from. 
Nobody cares what you bring to the plate. Nobody cares what you have to offer. Nobody cares that you have a degree in, in accounting. Nobody cares that you can run a tractor. All we care about is that you have the rope and you're willing to step up and grab it and take a hold and help somebody pull. Not for your own recognition. Not for, for your own selfish needs. Not to say, hey, look at me. Watch me. I'm putting, a, I'm putting $100 in the, in the whiskey barrel today. Look at this. Woohoo! Nobody cares about that. Because in the end, none of that matters. In the end, it matters how many people you helped along the way. How many acts of kindness. How many acts of love. How many things you did that, that perfectly aligned with the way Jesus Christ walked this earth. How many people did you bring to know Him? If you have to untangle some knots in your own rope to be able to get to somebody else's, that's part of it. God knows I had a, I mean, I had a lot of knots in the beginning. I had a lot of knots. I got tired of tying knots last night. That's why this one doesn't have that many in. But I, I had a lot of knots, okay? I quit counting. But look how, look how my knots start spacing out. My knots start getting further and further apart. Look how far that one is. Guess what? One of these knots down in here somewhere is my wife. And it's still a knot because she's my stronghold. She's somebody I can hang on to. Somebody that keeps me grounded. Make sure that I'm not getting a, a, ahead of myself. Make sure I'm not making a fool of myself. Make sure I'm not becoming too proud. So that's a knot that I can hang on to. That's not one I want to unravel. How many, how many people do you know that have just unraveled a knot in their marriage and just let go? That's way too common today, folks. That's something the church needs to step in and change. People are getting married at church. The people at the church need to let them know that's a knot you want to hang on to, not one you want to untie and let go. But look, look. I mean, the knots are getting further and further apart. Now, granted, this whole thing to, the, to these knots right here is still that little white end down there. Because that's all the time I've got on earth. Everything else that happens at the end, that's eternity. That's where I'm going when I leave here. That's where we all want to go when we leave here. Amen. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, has given us a rope, a guide, something that we can hang on to, something tangible. We don't understand it. We don't understand it. But the Holy Spirit is our guide through this rope. Okay? He takes us around turns. Boy, if I get tangled up in this and fall down. We go all the way around through here. We got all kinds of... I mean, we're just all over the place. But, but the Holy Spirit... I hope I don't knock that down. This might not be a good idea, y'all. It's all, it's all tangled up. I mean, it's, it goes in and out. It weaves in and out. And I guarantee you, if I threw this rope out there in the crowd and asked y'all to just weave it in and out... That's my life. You guys are my life. Each and every one of you have touched my rope at some point. Some point in my life, you have touched my rope. Some of you are still hanging on with me. Some of you are pulling me backwards. Some of you are pulling me forwards. It's a tug of war. Right? There, I mean, okay, knot number one, death. Knot number two, death in the family. Knot number three, birth in the family. Knot number four, wedding. Knot... Your, your knots are going to come. There's nothing you can do about your knots. Some of your knots, like I said, will be easy to untangle. Some of them will not be easy to untangle. Some of them you're just going to have to put behind you and keep moving. But the whole point I'm trying to make to you guys is Jesus Christ is at the end. Jesus Christ is at the end of your rope. If you don't do anything else, if you don't understand anything else about that knotty rope, Know that Jesus Christ is at the end. You can't see the end of it. It goes out that wall and it just keeps on going. Eternity, folks. Does that, does that help anybody figure out that little white strip right there is here? Everything else is there. Eternity. Forever. And ever and ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Somebody should do a song on that. <laughs> Randy Travis. There you go. Look, these guys went unnoticed. 
And I'm going to tell you that that was a, a spectacular event in the Bible. If Paul would have been killed in Damascus, who, who knows what our lives would be like today? Okay, because Paul, man, he, he just, he brought it. Okay, he brought it to everybody, everywhere he went. Once, he, once, once Jesus saved him on that road to Damascus, it was over. He was doing the job no matter what. He didn't care what you said, what I said, what they said, what they got threatened with. It didn't matter. He was going to preach the Word of God. Whew. It is hot in here. These men who we do not know because their names are not mentioned in Scripture, we know nothing about them. And I think that that's the most spectacular thing in that whole Scripture. Not that Paul was saved. Not that he went on to, to, to take the gospel to Rome and to Egypt. Not, not that he was able to continue to minister to people. The fact that he was saved by people that we don't know. There are people that you don't know yet that are prepared to save you. There are people in your lives that go unnoticed. They want no recognition. They get no recognition. They're saving you. Are you that to someone else is what I need to find out. Are you prepared to, to put all of your wants and needs behind to help save someone else? Because if we're going to go out into the streets into this community and we're going to preach the gospel and we're going to try to bring people to know Jesus, we've got to have some people back home holding the rope. We can't get it done. It doesn't matter if you're sweet. It doesn't matter if you mow, it doesn't matter if you dust or mop or serve food or bring food. or None of that matters. And it can't matter. It can't matter. We've just got to know that we've got this big bundle of corded up ropes that run right through this property and everybody in here has got a hand on it. So that we can pull those people out of the community through one of their knots. So that we can pull the people in the community through this property so that we can introduce them to the man that's at the end of their rope. So that we can let them know that, that there is something waiting past that small white strip of their rope that is so amazing, so powerful. And it's theirs, they don't know it. They don't know about their salvation. They don't know about that yet. That's what our job is for. One of those knots is Saltgrass Cowboy Church. One of those knots is any one of you. And we've got to be prepared when they get to that knot to either help them unravel it or help them hold on. But if we can't do that, if we can't all agree that we need to be hanging on to somebody's rope, we're not going to succeed outside of these walls. They're, they're you know, I hate to say this, but y'all know I don't, I don't joke around too much. There are people in this community that you don't know that are starving. They're hurting. They're strung out on meth. They're strung out on whatever. They're stealing. They're thieving. And we're real quick. We're real quick to jump on them and, and want to throw hate their way because they're, they're taking stuff that we work so hard for. And that's human nature. Okay? Somebody breaks into your truck, it's a demoralizing thing for you. Been there, done that, right in front of my house. Okay? It's, I know it's, it's a demoralizing thing. It makes you feel like, ooh, just want to strangle somebody. But here's what you need to know now today. Here's what we need to understand. That's their knot. That's their knot. It's not your knot, it's their knot. But you have to be there to help pull them through. You have to grab a hold of their rope and help them. Okay? And I know that if you got a hold of somebody that stole something from you, the first thing you want to do is grab them by the collar and you're not going to say Jesus Christ loves you. That's not going to be the first words out of your mouth. But let's think about this for a second. What if it was? What if we could all get to that point to where we grab somebody and just shake them and say, Jesus loves you and so do I. It's time to straighten out this knot. What if we could do that? Man, it, 
I'm telling you, Santa Fe would be amazing. Galveston County could become amazing. We could stretch out to Brazoria and Harris. We just move right on up. Okay? But we've got to be willing to hold the rope. We've got to be willing to hold the rope because we all know everybody in here is a believer. Okay? Jesus Christ is at the end of our rope. Always has been, always will be. Whether you knew it or not, He's always been there. And He's been pulling you right along. Oh, He sent the Holy Spirit down here to guide you through all these twists and turns. I better I forgot the kids were coming. I better get this all cleaned up a little bit. <laughs> we, have, we have all kinds of mess up here. Go ahead and just leave the rope there. No, uh -uh. They'll take care of it for they'll, be, they'll be pulling down the walls. <laughs> but anyway, I just want you to I just want you to have that perspective when you leave here today. Your time on earth is small. It's minuscule. It's not a whole lot of time to be worried about bickering and fighting and arguing and cussing and moaning. Not talking to your mama, not talking to your daddy, not talking to your brother, your sister, your cousin, your aunt, your uncle. Being, being ugly to your co-workers. There's no time for that. Your time in life is short. You should be spending all your time here on earth worried about what's going to happen down there. And the only way you can get down there to find out is if you're doing what you need to do down here. And what you need to do down here is you need to be praising and worshiping and loving and serving. And not for your own selfish reasons, but because you know that at the end of your rope, Jesus Christ is going to say, I love you. You did exactly what I needed you to do. Welcome, my faithful servant. So if you're here today and you're not sure what all this stuff is about that I'm talking about, you're not a believer like I said everybody in here was. If you're, if you're one of those people that's that's been here today for the first time because you heard about this crazy fat white guy up here talking crazy and getting all hot and sweaty and screaming and yelling. You know what? If you just came for the biscuits and gravy, like Brother Jim said, he's got the best biscuits and gravy around. If you're here today and you want to know about what we're talking about, turn with me to Romans. Dan, you going to go get the rest of them? Yeah, the right outside the building. Okay. Page 864. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God and by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. As the Scriptures tell us, anyone who trusts in Him will never be disgraced. Jew and Gentile are the same in this respect. They have the same Lord who gives generously to all who call on Him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. If you can call on the name of the Lord today, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ, today is the day we can start that process for you. So that you know for a fact the end of your rope is Firmly secured. He, he's, he's got you. He's got you. Even though you don't know Him, He knows you. So if we can say that prayer today, if we, can, if we can openly declare that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, you will be saved. So this right now, just pray with me right now. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to You right now.